morning, everybody. If I could just have your attention just for a few minutes. Welcome to Sharjah. Uh, I'm Tony Mulliken. I work for the Sharjah uh, Book Authority and the Sharjah International Book Fair. And uh, I'm what the Americans might call a warm-up act. Um, um, and some of you here who don't speak English will have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, now, that's really my first thing. You all should have a headset. If you haven't got a headset, there is instant um, translation from both languages. If you haven't got a headset, would you please put your hand up and we will get one for you. Excuse me? People with hands up need a headset. Could I get you to do that for me? Just here? If you'd be kind enough, it's a bit of a test. Keep your hands up as long as you can. <laughs> Thanks very much, everybody. There's just a few things. One of the most difficult things in any country is to get people to either switch their telephones off or to turn your telephones to silence. Uh, if I could ask you to do both of those things or one of those things, I'd be very grateful. Uh, I know how important these phones are, um, but it is sometimes rather irritating if they ring in the middle uh, of, a, of a speech. So if you could switch those off or to quiet, I'd be very grateful. You probably know that there are, in both of the stands, both the exhibitor stands and indeed uh, the ALA stand, there is tea, coffee, drinks, so the coffee breaks, both of those stands outside in the hall here will be serving coffee, sandwiches, biscuits, so please, in the breaks, make your way there. Again, from a food point of view, uh, lunch will be served in the culture, cultural hall. Some of you might not know where that is. There will be people to direct you. I'm so impressed that you're keeping your hands up. Thank you. Don't, don't let them go down. Um, the cultural hall where lunch is being served is at the far end of the exhibition hall. Just before you would go out, if you like, to the car park area, don't go out to the car park area. Turn left, there is signage all the way down the red carpet, and it's on the first floor at the end. So that's where lunch will be served during the course uh, of this conference. The other thing that's very important is Wi-Fi. In your brochures on page four, there is a Wi-Fi code. If you could just use that, that saves you having to ask about Wi-Fi and just connect at any time that you like. If you have any problems, later on just find anybody outside. But it is in your brochure. That's about it as far as housekeeping is concerned. I'm not going to ask you to behave yourselves. I want you not to behave yourselves. Enjoy the rest of the conference, but could I please introduce Chairman of the Sharjah Book Authority, Director of the Sharjah International Book Fair, Mr. Ahmed Al Amri. I'll speak in Arabic for everybody. السادة والسيدات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا ومرحبا بكم في الشارقة ونسعد باستضافتكم ومشاركتكم في الدورة الثانية من المؤتمر في المؤتمر المشترك بين معرض الشارقة الدولي للكتاب وجمعية أمناء المكتبات الأمريكية والذي نتطلع من خلاله إلى تمكين العاملين في مجال المكتبات من في المنطقة والعالم من تحقيق مزيد من النجاح والتميز في عملهم في العام الماضي التقينا للمرة الأولى في هذا المكان وانطلقنا من خلاله في حوارات متواصلة مع بعضنا البعض كانت فرصة عظيمة لنا أن نجتمع معا في خبراتنا المتنوعة وثقافاتنا المختلفة لنبحث في كيفية الارتقاء بالمكتبات والمحافظة على دورنا الريادي في المعرفة والثقافة والتاريخ وبمناسبة هذا المؤتمر الذي نتشرف بقامته لأول مرة تحت مظلة هيئة الشارقة للكتاب يسعدنا أن نعلن عن بدء تنفيذ مشروع 
المستودع الرقمي لمكتبات الشارقة والذي يهدف إلى توفير جميع الموجودات هذه المكتبات الأكبر من نوعها في المنطقة على الشبكة الأنكبوتية دون أي قيود أو عوائق مع الحفاظ على الملكية الفكرية لأصحاب المؤلفات والأعمال التي تضمها المكتبات إن هذا المستودع الرقمي سيشكل إضافة مهمة إلى الرصيد المعرفي الذي تملكه إمارة الشارقة حيث سيكون من السهل لجميع مستخدمي الشبكة العنكبوتية في مختلف الدول الوصول إلى محتويات مكتبة الشارقة بما في ذلك الكتب والدوريات والمواد السمعية والبصرية والكتب القديمة والنادرة وبذلك وبذلك ستصبح المقتنيات هذه المكتبات متاحة للعالم أتمنى أن يشكل مشروعنا الجديد هذا دافعا لإحياء دوري وحضور المكتبات في الحياة العامة وتمنى كذلك لجميع الضيوف والمشاركين في هذا المؤتمر نقاشات ولقاءات ممتعة ومفيدة من أجل تمكين إقطاع المكتبيات من أجل تمكين انقضاء المكتبات في هذه المنطقة والعالم من التطور والابتكار شكرا لكم على حسن استماعكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm going to speak in English Thank you very much, Ahmed, and I hope all of you enjoy the rest of the pair. But there is one man here who's going to speak next and do the rest of the introductions, whose title as Director of International Relations could not be a better title. Would you please welcome to the stage, Michael Dowling. Thank you very much, Tommy. Uh, I want to thank... Ahmed Alamiri uh, for being such a wonderful partner um, and such a, a wonderful supporter of the library community and obviously with your announcements just showcases you know how you rep um, combined the books love of literature and libraries and we're looking forward to, to having access to that database around the world. I want to thank uh, in addition to Ahmed I'd like to thank the staff for all the work of putting this conference together the beautiful lounge area out there um, all the lunches and everything they do a wonderful job, you know, it seems smooth on our end and your end, but they do so much work, we really want to thank them, so if you can just give them a <laughs> And actually, this is a, a three-way partnership, so it's the Dasarja International Book Fair, the American Library Association, but we have a, a third partner that you also don't see too often, but they are ones who have been very instrumental in getting this part activity going. So I'd like to introduce the combined book fair exhibits uh, staff, uh, directors, and, and the owners of it. So uh, John Malinowski is here, so give John a warm welcome. And most of you probably through registration, you saw his, his sister, who's also involved, Janet Frisch. So you can also thank her um, for, for being a great partner with us. Um, so I uh, just have a few also kind of housekeeping ones, and then. Uh, we will then have a couple of short presentations from some of our sponsors, and then we will have our keynote uh, presenter, who I will introduce. So, um, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you who participated last year. Great to see all of you again. I recognize quite a number of you. And, so, and also for the first year people, if you were the first year person, raise your hand. So we'd like to welcome you. Oh, great, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate that. <laughs> As, as was mentioned, that we very are very um, pleased and um, glad to have so many uh, sponsors here. Um, we have our platinum sponsors, our gold sponsors, and our, our exhibitors. So please, uh, during the breaks or when you have some free time, please go and, and talk to them. Uh, you know, they are very supportive of helping to make this, this actually event work. So, so please uh, take some time, go and talk to them about their new products and their new services. Um, just wanted to let you know there are two, two ALA distributors uh, that are exhibiting. So uh, if you're interested in uh, purchasing ALA books, 
you would go to Eurospan, which is in the, in the, uh, across the hall from the lounge. And also we have just announced a new partnership to, as a distributor, Alzad, uh, for digital archiving. So they are then uh, responsible for uh, working with you to get subscriptions for the uh, RDA toolkit, for book list online, for choice online, so our subscription services. So once again, if you're interested in those products, please go and see Alzad for digital archiving. Um, the poster sessions wanted to remind you that we will have all the great uh, regular sessions, but we will have our poster session uh, from uh, 1730 to 1815 uh, this, this evening. So after all of your sessions, please come by. Um, they will be on the outside of the uh, library sponsor area. And so another chance for you to interact with your colleagues who are doing exciting uh, projects, uh, research, other initiatives. So please uh, stick around for that. Um, and then now I would like to um, introduce, we're going to have a short presentations from two of our platinum sponsors. So our first uh, platinum sponsor, uh, Ingram, that will do a short presentation. So I'd like to introduce uh, Rex Steiner, who is the area manager for Middle East Library Services. So Rex, come on up and I will try to get you into starting our system. Never mind, sorry. I'm a professional here. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much, Tony. Okay, so Rex, please. All right. All right. Uh, well, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to come to the conference and listen to what we have to present here. Um, it's always good to be back in Sharjah. I, I started my international library career here, in fact, in Sharjah in 1998 at the American University of Sharjah, so it's kind of like coming home for me. Uh, but today uh, I'd like to talk about Ingram Library Services, and um, I'd like to start with a quote by a young poet named Matty Stepanik, who said, when there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. And Ingram really believes that. We want to be a part of your team, we want to collaborate, we want to cooperate, we want to help you and your library achieve those wonderful things that you're trying to do, and also wonderful things like this conference today here in Sharjah with ALA. There we go. So just a little bit about uh, Ingram and who we are. Uh, Ingram is a family-owned company, has been for over 50 years. Uh, it is the largest and most trusted distributor of physical content uh, in the world. And how we achieve that is through working with a number of partners. Uh, over 30,000 publishers, as you can see on the chart here. And also where it says channels, 39,000 partners, that means we go to places uh, uh, like retailers, uh, warehousing uh, for, for books, that kind of thing. Different groups so that we have in total over 13 million titles for you to choose from. Uh, we also are only focusing on public libraries and special libraries. Oops. And what do we provide? Well, obviously we provide books, uh, as you'd expect, from library materials. We also have audio books, uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. We are providing those and also continually to, continuing to expand on those as we work with different licensing groups and such, uh, so there's no conflict there. We provide music, also gifts and games. We've provided things such as uh, puppets uh, and board games. We worked, uh, one of the libraries we work with here in the Middle East is the Qatar National Library. And uh, with them, we have managed to provide a lot of these materials, sort of non-traditional, you might say, library materials. Uh, so we can help with that. Uh, the people that are trying hard and working with publishers and different areas uh, to get these things done as well as selection and collection development are the leadership team. They are in Nashville. Uh, I won't go into the details of each one, but they all have experience in libraries, working with libraries, working internationally. So uh, there's a lot of years of experience there that's there to help you acquire what you need and to work with you to achieve your goals. Uh, 
just some basics here about what Ingram can do. We have a search tool, a collection development tool called iPage. Uh, it does some, some really good things. You can have a real-time stock check. So sometimes with some, some collection development tools, you might go through and do a search, and you see some titles there, and it says last provided in 1987. Well, that's probably not going to help you much. But with Ingram's iPage, you can actually go in and have a look and say, I want this item, and you can see that it's actually in a warehouse, one of Ingram's warehouses, and where it is. So you'll know that that item really is in stock and on hand. So that's, that's very useful when you're trying to spend your budget and not encumber a lot of money that you won't be able to spend at the end of the year. Uh, also, there's a number of other things we do here. I'll, you'll get the slides. Um, it would be downloaded for you. You can have a look. I don't want to sit here and read them all to you. But we, do, we have the ability to build spe a special collection list for you, custom built for you. So if you have a special area that you're interested in, you want materials in, we can help provide those items. Uh, also with iPage, it does a deduplication so that you don't worry about ordering so something twice. Essentially, it goes through your catalog each time you try to place an order and it looks to see if you have that item in your collection. So it'll automatically come up and post a warning that says, uh, you already own this, you sure do you want, that you sure do you want it? Also work with several different automation systems. So uh, we have a long history with most, most of these groups. So uh, there's also a number of different ways for you to order. You can order directly in iPage. Or uh, sometimes some libraries have very special uh, topics that they that say it's, I don't know, dentistry, for example. And you know that you're going to want all, everything that comes out every year on dentistry. We can set it up so there are automatic shipments. You don't have to worry about the uh, going through lists and selecting. We'll send them automatically if that's the way you, you choose to do it. Also, we do EDI ordering through almost all of the major uh, ILS systems out there. So. We can customize this ordering uh, method to the way you need it. Uh, I know the Middle East has some uh, rather unique requirements from time to time, and uh, we're used to that, so customization is not an issue. And also for public and special libraries, uh, Ingram is one of the largest providers of materials for public libraries in North America. As such, uh, they, we have extensive experience with adult collections, anything from fiction to graphic novels to travel books to you name it, pretty much the, the recreational reading areas. Also, we provide materials for teen collections, children's collections, and also media collections. And we are working extensively right now with the uh, Cutter National Library providing content in all of these areas. Uh, so we have some experience out here in the Middle East and uh, we are happy to use that and help you. And also opening day collections. We have an extensive experience uh, with opening day collections, both here in the Middle East and as well as North America. Uh, Ingram also helped with the opening day collections uh, of several branches and several areas of the Singapore National Library. So we have some international experience there. And as you would expect, the number one goal with opening day collections is communication with you. Uh, we will have conference calls, we'll have on-site meetings. We want to know exactly what you need so that we can set up detailed profiles of collections that you want so that we can actually hand select and choose the uh, materials you'll need and put them on a list so you can select them. Our collection development department has over 350 years experience. Uh, doing selections. They are all degreed librarians uh, and they really know their stuff. They, they have, are specialists in their area. And cataloging services. Uh, we can do LC, Dewey, uh, pretty much any and every classification scheme out there. We also do some customization. For example, in certain children's collections, they might want just a very modified type of Dewey, or maybe a special collection will require a special cataloging customization. Uh, we can do that, and we have done that. But we also do the traditional types, uh, AACR2, RDA, and we follow Mark 21 format. 
Uh, we also provide shelf-ready materials, so if you need RFID tags, we can do that with any system, Bibliotech uh, or 3M or whoever you're using, we can do that. Uh, the usual what you expect, spine labels, protected labels, property stamps. Uh, we can get those property stamps in Arabic if you need them. Uh, we've found one supplier in Tennessee that can do that, so let us know. Uh, we also have a collection development tool called Edelweiss Analytics. This tool is uh, really handy because it goes through your collection and will give you a report that shows where the strong points of your collection are, where the weak points are, in a sense of maybe you're not sure if you need to order more materials in one area or another. Edelweiss will go through your collection and analyze and say you, you have this, ma this many materials in this area so that maybe you'd want to base that on the degree program and say maybe I have too much or too little and it'll help you get a really good grip and sense of what your collection is like. One other nice thing about Edelweiss is that it, this is also a tool used by retail outlets, mostly in North America, and by some libraries. So they enter their collections and their ordering plans, depending on the situation. And you, as, as a user of Edelweiss, can look into that and say, oh, well, it looks like, for example, this author is going to be really popular because the orders are way up in this area. So maybe you'd want to make sure that you have that popular title because your users or your, 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 uh, your people want, well, are very, very uh, sort of fans of that author and you want to make sure you have enough materials on that. You can go in and actually look at the pre-publication dates and the areas where you're going to have more books by that author or in that subject area. So those are two handy, handy things in Edelweiss that can help you build your collections accurately. So to sum things up, what can we do to help you? Well, library material, that's obvious. Uh, collection development, we have a very in-depth department for that that can help you. Ordering and management, we're talking about iPage, EDI ordering in Edelweiss. Shelf-ready material, we can do pretty much anything you want or need have to have done to have things brought to your library and ready to go on the shelf. Uh, representation, we have specialists in pretty much every subject area. So if you want help in any area, you don't have time to sit through and select all these materials in a certain area, we can provide lists so you can go through them quickly. And also there's a stability and security uh, factor here. Ingram is a family owned business, uh, it has been for over 50 years. And that means essentially that we really care and, and have a passion for what you're doing in your library. We want to be a part of your library. We want to be a part of your family and you want, we want you to be a part of ours. Uh, John Ingram himself, the, uh, the CEO of the company, was here just a few days ago. And that just kind of gives you an idea of how much the company cares about this region and this area. Uh, you know, the, the number one guy, the son of the founder, was here to come here and talk to people and see what they wanted. So that's, that's, a, that's a touch that you don't often find or don't find with a company that's run by a large corporation or conglomeration. So that's a special touch that I, I think makes Ingram unique as well. So that is it for me. And uh, I guess if you have any questions, you can catch me later because I'm sure we want to stay on schedule. So. Okay. So thank you, Rex, and, and yeah, Rex will be here all week, <laughs> the next couple days, uh, and he'll be in the Librarian's Lounge, so if you want to follow up with Rex, please do so. Uh, I'd like to introduce our other platinum sponsor, who is the American Psychological Association, and I would like to introduce uh, Peter Gavarino. Gavarino? Gavarino. Gavarino. Gavarino, good Italian name. So Peter, come on up and, and talk a little about uh, APA and what you guys have to offer. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Gaviorno, and I'm the Senior Director of Sales, Licensing, and Marketing at the American Psychological Associ Association. And before I get started with the presentation, uh, I wanted to thank Ahmed al uh for working with the ALA organization uh, on such an important conference in the Middle East. 
And I also like to thank jo uh, John and Janet as well for putting together the uh, combined book exhibit. We're delighted to be a uh, platinum sponsor. Uh, today I'd like to really talk a little bit about uh, the American Psychological Association, give you some background. Uh, the APA is located in Washington, D.C. It has about uh, 600 employees, uh, and we're the largest psychological association in the world with over 122,500 members, and we're involved in a wide variety of activities to support psychology as a science and as a profession. And among other things, uh, the APA is committed to increasing and disseminating psychological knowledge through meetings and through professional uh, contacts, reports, and of course a robust publishing program, which I'm going to explain a little bit about now. Um, as a nonprofit organization, APA publishes from a society perspective. One of our main goals is to disseminate psychological information as widely as possible, publishing to the benefit of society and to, peop and to improve people's lives. It's really our core function. As one, uh, as one might expect, um, APA has close contacts with the, uh, the field. Uh, many of our members are our, uh, writers, there are uh, editors, there are reviewers. And uh, so we consider it sort of a built-in pool of resources that we're able to utilize uh, that's critical to the APA publishing enterprise. We also have a number of uh, pa partnerships and alliances with psychological associations around the world and also organizations that focus on behavioral science knowledge development. And I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of those uh, uh, enterprises later. Uh, the APA publishes both primary literature, books and journals in print and electronic format, as well as bibliographic information and uh, abstract information. Uh, not to take too much longer about the actual publishing program, but it is an extensive program. Uh, we are a significant journal publisher. Uh, we currently have about 92 journals in the program, and we're continuing to be uh, providing high-quality peer-reviewed journals with high impact factors, and we hope that uh, within the next year or so, we'll have over 100 journals in the uh, list of content. Another important area of our program is our APA books uh, imprints. Uh, it, the, our most important uh, program and the one that generates the, the, the highest amount of uh, activity is our APA books program, which is uh, designed for scholarly and professional titles. And of course, one of the uh, most important bestsellers uh, that we have in APA books program is the publication manual of the APA, uh, which is committed to improving scholarly uh, writing. And uh, it's distributed actually through Ingram, uh, among others. So we're very happy about that. Uh, also, a very important imprint that we have is called Imagination Press, which is a self-help book line of books for children. Pretty much any kind of an area that a child might have a problem with, we probably have a book about it. So uh, I encourage you to stop by and, and see me at the, uh, at the exhibit, and we can talk a little bit about that. Also, uh, APA does uh, have a small imprint of uh, books designed for the general public, and that's called the APA Life Tools. And what I'm really going to focus on today is talking a little bit about our uh, uh, databases, which the initial uh, program started in 1967, believe it or not, with the development of PsychInfo. So who do we market to in terms of the, uh, uh, to the library community? Pretty much every kind of library that is out there. Uh, we have a significant input uh, in the academic library market as well as hospital and healthcare, government, public libraries, and so on. And, and we also include uh, nonprofit associations and psychological institutes in, our, institutes in our coverage. One of the things I, uh, I like to talk about when I talk about psychological content is that um, we are a multidisciplinary publisher. So um, 
while psychology is at its core, as you can see from the, the diagram here, uh, we've actually uh, identified seven other sub-disciplines that are very important to psychology. And then beyond that, there are other areas in the outer circle that uh, are, are actually very important to um, disseminating psychological information as widely as possible. So whether you're in uh, areas such as um, engineering or counseling or experimental human factors, you, you name it, that kind of discipline, there's, we have content that supports those areas. So really think about uh, psychology as a much broader discipline. It's not narrowly focused as some people may think. So I'd like to quickly go through some of our uh, products that uh, I think might be beneficial for your organizations. Uh, PsychInfo is our discovery and finding tool. We index about 2,500 scholarly journals and it contains nearly 4 million records. It also has 2 million DOIs and a, a direct linking to, to the literature. And it also has 72 million cited references, and that's continuing to grow. So significant uh, content in the uh, bibliographic and abstract database. Psych Articles, which is our uh, full text database uh, of more than 100 journals. It includes all of the APA journals from volume, back to volume one, issue one, but also includes uh, content from the Canadian Psychological Association, as, the, as well as Hografa Publishing, um, and the database currently contains about 200,000 articles. Psychbooks is our full text database of more than 4,000 peer-reviewed books and nearly 60,000 book chapters. It contains recently uh, published and historical content, both from APA and from other publishers. Uh, the APA, uh, book, APA books e-collections are uh, copyright year collections and it's really a purchase model. What we've done is we've created from 2001 through 2015, uh, individual years can be purchased as one collection or multiple years can be purchased as a collection. And that was in total reaction to the library community that was looking for an opportunity to purchase rather than to license content. Uh, finally, uh, on this slide, a very important newer product that we have is uh, Psych Tests, which is a database of psychological measures, scales, surveys, and other instruments. And it's really essential uh, to, to the research needs of professionals and students and educators across the behavioral sciences. The instruments are easily downloaded as PDFs, and right now there's over 40 languages that are available within the database. If the authors have given us the material in multiple languages, we actually will uh, publish that in the multiple languages and then it can be downloaded. Then I have a, uh, uh, like to talk a little bit about Site Critiques, which is a, a review database of books, videos, software, and popular film. It contains over 41,000 individual reviews with more than 600 published on an annual basis. And it's a great tool for collection development. Psych Extra, is a database that we have that's um, sort of a hybrid database, a combination of bibliographic and full text information, and it's non-peer-reviewed literature. So there's no overlap with the content that's in the products such as PsychInfo, uh, and the material comes from things like government reports, uh, website articles, and so on. So as a researcher's going through their process, uh, they can use that to really determine whether they found everything in a particular field as they're completing their research. Another very interesting uh, product that we recently developed is called Psychotherapy, which is a, a database of uh, streaming psychotherapy sessions between real patients and, and real therapists. These are not actors. We have about uh, 360 videos featuring over 100 uh, known therapists. Um, there's uh, 200 therapy topics and more than 85 therapeutic approaches that are demonstrated in the, in the system. And individuals can create and customize their own profiles, 
Um, it's, it's very interesting and a highly used database at this point, especially in the area of counseling. And of course, we have a, a last product I really want to talk about is the APA Handbooks in Psychology, which are really a reference series of multiple volumes that uh, are cover all of the most important and emerging fields and sub-disciplines within psychology. And all of these things are available on the APA PsychNet platform. Our content is distributed through uh, other providers like EBSCO and uh, Ovid and ProQuest. But the APA has an interest in making sure that customers have an opportunity to choose the platform of their choice and it's a good alternative. If you're interested in uh, talking about that further, please see me at the uh, exhibit area. One of the things that's important to know is that all of the databases and electronic products are available on our platform, but some of the products are only available on APA Psych not, and not available through some of our vendor partners. And this, the list of those are on the slide here. Okay, uh, one of the other things, if you haven't heard enough about our products already, um, you can go to the APA Library and Resource Center, uh, use the e e URL that's located here, and you can receive a bunch of information about uh, product descriptions, updates on our coverage, we post our pricing, we have the list of our vendor partners, and we provide a lot of tools for librarians to utilize to train uh, their users and staff, uh, whether it's YouTube videos or uh, webinars or online chat and so forth. The last thing I really want to talk about today is a very interesting um, initiative that we've just uh, taken up. Um, APA really recently committed to working with a nonprofit organization that's, that's called um, the United Palestinian Appeal uh, on a very special program to assist children in Gaza and the West Bank who have been severely affected by the conflict in those areas. So APA licensed the uh, rights to a non, uh, on a non-royalty basis uh, to the United Palestinian Appeal to translate five of our Imagination Press children's titles uh, into Arabic in an effort to help children cope with their feelings and their emotions about what's happening to them. Uh, and the UPA will distribute these books to children, parents, and caregivers, as well as schools and uh, therapy centers in the affected areas. And uh, I just wanted to show you the list of uh, topics that are included in this uh, effort. It's, again, it's a, something we're doing as a part of the, the association to, to promote uh, wellness for children. Uh, each of these titles that the UPA will translate address different aspects of the behavioral and emotional issues that children are experiencing as a result of the ongoing traumatic experiences. So again, it's not just publishing that we do, it's the humanitarian aspect of things. Uh, and that's the end of the presentation and I appreciate your time. So thank you, Peter. Once again, Peter will be in the librarian's lounge. Um, get, now, I'd like to, it's my extreme pleasure to introduce the American Library Association President, uh, Executive Director of the Cuyahoga County Public Library, Sari Feldman. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for having me here. It's a tremendous honor to be with you and to be in Sharjah. Um, I want to especially thank His Highness Sheikh Dr. Sultan bin Mohammed al Kazimi and our very good friend to the American Library Association, Ahmed al Almri. Thank you very much and to all his directors and people who have worked so hard to put on this event. The theme of the 2015 book fair that we're at here today, Inspire Creativity Within, 
aligns with today's vision of America's libraries. Um, today, libraries are less about what we have for people, although certainly our collections are still very important. But we are more about what we do for and with people. And I'll share a little bit with you this morning. Libraries transform, as you saw before. We can interpret this message as a statement of the dramatic outcomes that librarians achieve every day. Librarians transform people, children, students, researchers, retirees, by supporting education that drives individual opportunity. Libraries transform communities by providing information and services that advance societal progress. We transform by educating and facilitating. We transform by inspiring. We can understand the Libraries Transform message as a reflection of the way in which libraries evolve to meet changing needs in our society. From technology integration to a more outcome intensive focus, libraries has tra have transformed over time to keep pace with the knowledge economy. Libraries are committed to advancing their legacy of reading, and nowhere is that more present than here at this book fair. But it must be part of a larger digital inclusion program that are important to libraries in advancing society. Libraries are partners in learning. We're helping teachers build robust curriculums. We're providing researchers access to data and information. And we're providing communities and individuals with the tools they need to advance. You can see here in these photos that typical programs in America are author programs, interactive early childhood areas, and a digital download station, because increasingly content comes in that format. Libraries are well positioned to transform when we understand and acknowledge the trends that are affecting people and the communities that we serve. And these are global trends. We are together in this transformation. This is a snapshot from the libraries-transform.org website. And let me repeat that, because I hope you'll visit that website, libraries-transform.org. And it identifies many of the trends that are, we are constantly talking about in the United States. The Internet of Things, connected learning, digital natives, maker movements, robotics. And when you go to the website and you click on one of these balls, you can get additional information about these trends and some of the research that surrounds them. And I'm going to speak about a few of them today. One of the most important and fundamental core values that we share within the library profession is the belief that people should be free to explore ideas. As technology changes how libraries deliver service and how we can best support learning at all levels, we sometimes bump up to the question of privacy and the role libraries play in reasonably protecting that right to privacy. For digital natives, those growing up in a world where they have only known technology as being readily available, notions of privacy and sharing online may be different than the perspectives of past generations. Um, the privacy trend has been well researched by the American Library Association, particularly the Policy Revolution Trends Report. And it says that while people are concerned about protecting their privacy, they really don't do anything about protecting it, particularly the next generation. So for libraries to flourish as these centers with access to information and learning, 
we have to educate the people that use technology in and outside our library about the ways that they can protect themselves. And in school libraries, that's particularly important. The words on the screen are because the world is at their fingertips and the world can be a scary place. In particular, we must be very conscious of teaching people how to protect their privacy on the web. On the digital front, libraries are uniquely and rather ideally positioned to help all members of society get up to speed or remain engaged with the rapid shifts in technology. Digital inclusion is all about equitable access to internet connected devices and the online content as well as the skills to use it in your life. According to current research, nearly all United States public libraries have free Wi-Fi access, but it must go much further than that. We must be teaching people about the, the um, digital content and also how to apply it to solve their problems. About two-thirds of America's libraries are upgrading their infrastructure but nearly all American libraries are teaching people about the use of technology and how it can be applied in their lives. Because more than a quarter of US households don't have a computer with an internet connection. And I think that's startling to people in other parts of the world um, to think about how many US citizens don't have access to the internet and how critical access through libraries has become for everything in their lives from employment to education to starting a business. So high-speed broadband is an increasingly important issue in American libraries. But again, without the tools to use that broadband, it won't be very meaningful in people's lives or even for libraries. For libraries, digital readiness represents a tremendous opportunity to lead the national conversation around learning. The opportunity to lead in learning is happening in many different ways in American libraries. This is an example from my own library. Um, the digital uh, content is uh, kind of um, in abundance. It's an, information abundance, and this is the digitized collection from the Cleveland Museum of Art, which is in my community. Through a partnership with the Cleveland Museum of Art that has digitally scanned every art item in its collection and embedded the content, we are able to stream virtual collections into our, a branch library <laughs> so that these collections are curated for the community, and then people can experience the art museum in their own local library. Another example of collaboration that our library has with our outside partners is around health literacy. We are partnering with our community hospital to have kiosks available in the branch library and people are able to do their biometrics, their basic health information, and keep records of that health information. They're also able to have interactive video displays with doctors and nurse practitioners to learn about how to um, lead a healthy lifestyle. And again, that's happening right in their own community, and it's not necessary for them to visit their doctor to get this information and have this experience. Another trend that we see impacting libraries is the sharing economy. Because students can't afford scholarly journals on a ramen noodle budget, the little packages of ramen noodles. Libraries all over the United States are building collections that focus uh, on learning rather than just on books. <coughs> And although books are still important, these new collections are very interesting and very exciting. Millennials 
the millennial generation in particular, are much more interested in experiences over stuff. So libraries in the United States are catching up with that trend. Again, we're less about what we have for people and more about what we do for and with people. And these are some examples of what is happening in American libraries, um, particularly around content creation and also connected learning. So we see people using a green screen and making videos. Someone um, um, actually creating a digital recording and then some young people working on a robotics project in the library. And these are increasingly becoming part of America Library Service. Content creation and um, connected learning. One area where libraries are increasingly getting involved in schools, on campuses, and also in public libraries is content creation around self-publishing. And this is an example of a platform that we have available on our website where our community can upload its content. They can upload their eBooks and share them with the larger community. And this is something that people are very, very interested in. The creation of their own eBooks, whether they're poetry, novels, or nonfiction and then sharing it with a larger audience. Because there are more than 14,400,000 search results for the 2016 presidential election, again, libraries transform. Virtually all libraries, as I said, are providing access to free Wi-Fi, and more than 90% have digital literacy training. Americans want libraries to support local education, serve special constituents such as veterans, active duty military personnel, and immigrants, help local businesses, job seekers, and those upgrading their work skills, embrace new technologies such as 3D printers, and provide services to help customers learn about high-tech gadgetry. These are trends that we cannot ignore, and we cannot ignore the value of America's libraries. But not all Americans are recognizing this value. It's a perception challenge. People think of libraries as quiet places for books and study. And the truth is, of course, that it's a lifeline for people at key moments in their lives. Every type of library, school libraries, academic libraries, and public libraries are essential to people at different disruptive or change moments in their lives. So to have a solution for maybe the lack of understanding about the value of libraries, the American Library Association has launched the Libraries Transform campaign. We're committed to a marketing effort that strives to increase funding support for libraries and to advance information policies in alignment with the American Library Association's advocacy goals. It's our new campaign for America's libraries. On October 29th of this year, we launched the campaign in Washington, D.C. and across the nation. We hosted pop-up events in Washington, D.C where people took quizzes on an iPod. They then uh, were given a Starbucks gift card, and we helped to enlighten people about what were the things they just didn't know were happening in America's libraries. And these are some photos from that day. We also encouraged, is, encouraged libraries across the country to post the Libraries Transform in social media. The idea was to amplify the message and have people recognize the value of America's libraries. We want to achieve three main objectives. Increase awareness of and support for the transforming library, 
shift the perception of libraries from obsolete or nice to have to essential and engage and energize librarians and library workers and build external advocates to influence local, state, and national policy makers. Advocacy is one of the three pillars of the American Library Association's strategic plan, and this campaign will support advocacy by communicating the message about the value of America's libraries. In addition to the public awareness campaign, the ALA staff and the Center for the Future of Libraries are working to create tools and resources that will help current library professionals and library organizations deal with the rapid cultural shifts that are taking place throughout the nation. We also have the American Library Association Knowledge Alliance Initiative to recruit smart, talented, and innovative people to the profession. We believe that this campaign, which shows the energy and excitement about what's happening in libraries, that it's much more about people and connected learning, will recruit some of the best and the brightest into the profession. Transforming ourselves, transforming our organizations, and transforming our image is how we are going to move boldly into the future. And again, these are some photos that show you the energy and the change that's happening in America's libraries. So we can see that the transform message is imperative for libraries. When districts are eliminating school library positions, in America, we must transform. When colleges and universities are pulling funding from academic libraries without recognizing their value, we must transform. And when community foundations and grant makers, as well as community funders, do not recognize the value of public libraries, we must transform we must demonstrate that libraries are neither obsolete or nice to have. We have to demonstrate that libraries are essential, whether it's through education, employment, entrepreneurship, engagement, or empowerment. Libraries create individual opportunity and community progress, and I believe progress for the nation if I can leave you with one message today, whether you are from Sharjah or another nation, libraries are essential for progress to the nation. So let's start progress together and let's show the world that libraries transform. Thank you very much. I will be here throughout the day, and I'll be very happy to talk with you. I'm uh, delighted to be here representing the American Library Association, but if anybody had a question, I'd be happy to answer it right now. I know it's time for a break. You've been a wonderful and attentive audience. Again, thank you so much for having me here today.